Hello options traders and welcome back. Steve Gans here with lesson number two on options Greeks. This is going to be on theta. You may have already seen the lesson that covers delta. Theta is probably one of the most important ones for me personally as I am largely what's called the delta neutral trader. I'll show you examples of what that means here a little bit later. So I'm largely depending on theta decay to bring profitability into my options trades. And this is kind of one of the main things that I do also as income style trades for uh, weekly, monthly income also. Now, all that said, in case someone did not see the prior lesson, I do want to do a recap. So if you looked at the prior lesson and you're already familiar with intrinsic and extrinsic values, you can skip forward a little bit. But this is something that's very important. People need to understand this concept. So I want to make sure that I'm going to present it with you literally every time on the Greek. So intrinsic value is the same as the moneyness of an option. What I mean by moneyness is you hear people say that option is in the money, out of the money, at the money, etc. An out of the money option has no intrinsic value at all. I'll show you examples of this in just a moment. Extrinsic value is the value of an option beyond its intrinsic value. And again, that helps define the moneyness. It's made up mainly of two key components, time value, which is theta, the topic of today's video, and volatility. To give you an example of this, if I own a $100 call on XYZ stock, and that stock is currently trading at $105, the intrinsic value of that call is $5. It is $5 in the money. Now, the extrinsic value is going to vary with the amount of time and volatility that's in that option. So if we are at expiration and I am $5 in the money, in other words, the underlines at 105, I have a $100 call, then I'm $5 in the money. The value of this option is going to be worth $5. And there's no extrinsic value left because we are at expiration. Now, if we're prior to expiration, could be a day, could be a week, could be a month. If we're prior to expiration here, there's going to be some extrinsic value. And that basically is a factor of the amount of time left and the volatility in that particular option. And the reason that's there is because if you're not at expiration, things can happen. The value of the underline can go up. The value of the underline can go down. There's still things that can happen. So there are still unknowns in that option. And because there's still unknowns, that can drive that price up above the $5 intrinsic value. And again, whatever amount that it gets driven up is the extrinsic value part. So again, it's very important that we understand that. And again, we'll kind of talk about the moneyness of an option. So an out of the money option has a market value less than the premium. This means that the option would not be profitable to exercise at that time. If I own a call option that has a strike price of $100 and the current stock price is 90, the option would be out of the money because it would not be profitable to exercise that option. In other words, paying $100 a share for the stock and then only be able to sell it for $90 a share. So it is out of the money. And in the money option has a market value greater than the premium. This means that the option would be profitable to exercise. Again, by way of example, if I have a strike price of 100 in my option and the underlying stock is currently at 110, that option would be in the money and it would be profitable to exercise the option, buy the 100 shares of stock for $100 and then instantly sell it for 110 or if I wanted to hang on to it, I'd already be up $10 per share in that trade. At the money, of course, has no intrinsic value. It could still have some extrinsic value if there is time that is left in that option, but there would not be intrinsic value in that option at that point of time. To give you an example, again, we'll talk about XYZ Corporation. If it's trading at $100, a 110 call is out of the money. A 100 put or call is at the money. 
110 put is in the money to help kind of just drive that point home. So now let's talk a little bit about theta specifically. Much like I said, delta equals direction, I think of theta equals time, okay? Now, theta also has a volatility component to it, and we'll get to that when we start studying Vega in one of the future videos. But for right now, just theta equals time. Theta is one of the Greeks, which are a set of measures that describe the behavior of options. It measures the rate of decline in the value of an option due to the passage of time. Now, that decline can work in our favor or it can work against us. We're going to see examples of both of those when we get into the lab portion of this video. Theta tells you how much the price of the option is expected to decrease each day as that option nears expiration. Theta is a dynamic measure. It changes as the time to expiration changes. It also changes with volatility. That's the vega component of uh, that particular option. Theta is a useful tool because it can help traders manage their risk. If a trader has a long call option with a theta of $1.05 or 105, this means the value of that option is going to decrease by $1.05 each day as the option starts approaching expiration. Now, that number changes daily. It will accelerate, as we'll see here in a moment. But basically, it helps the trader understand how much a trade might be costing them to hold if they are short theta, or how much they might gain by holding a position if they're long theta. Again, we'll look at those factors in just a moment. Theta is always a negative number for long options and a positive number for short options. That's because the value of an option decreases as time passes. So long options holders will lose money while short options holders will make money as theta changes. This is a diagram of theta and how theta accelerates the closer you get to expiration. So if you're 90, 120 days out, theta decay is not going to happen very fast. If it starts off decaying at, let's say, $1.05, by the time you get to the end of that first 30-day period, maybe it's decaying at the rate of $1.10. But then if we get down to here, it might be decaying at, let's say, $1.50, and then it's $1.60, $1.70. So it starts decaying much, much faster the closer you get to expiration. It's kind of an exponential curve, if you will. So let's go to the lab now and take a look at theta using option strat and understanding some different types of positions and how theta comes into play. So the first one I'm going to look at here, much like our prior lesson where we were just looking at a long call, I'm going to look at a long call. In this case, I'm using Apple. It's 70 days out. I'm buying essentially an at-the-money option. Apple's trading at 189, and I'm buying the 190 long call. So if I look here, I can see that my max loss in this case is going to be $707. Now, that's going to be a function of what I would have to pay for this option right there. I'd be paying $7.08. That's going to be essentially my loss in this trade if it fully decays out from under me. Now we can look at the Greeks here as well. If we look at the Greeks, we can see that theta is a negative $5.82. What that means is that theta is decaying on this thing on a daily basis at $5.82. And if we march forward in time, we're going to see that our T0 line, if the underlying price here does not change at all, if the price of Apple stays at 189.97, we're going to see that this is going to lose value. The closer we get to expiration, the more money we're going to lose, and the faster it's going to accelerate. We'll look at the speed of the acceleration here, or the speed of that change in just a moment. But essentially, it's going to continue to move faster and faster the closer we get to expiration. Now, I'm just going to save this trade real quick so that we can take a look at how that might be impacted. 
So now I want to take a look at this trade in table mode. I can come in here and I can look at table and I want to specifically look at theta decay. So if I put theta on here, I can see that at the start of this trade, I'm at $190 price on Apple. This is going to decay at $5.80 a day. That's how much it's going to cost me to maintain or hold this position on that day. But as we get closer and closer to expiration, you will see that theta decay accelerates to where when we get down to the last couple days, it's decaying at a rate of $21 a day. That's that curve I was telling you about where this accelerates the closer and closer you get to expiration. Now, I can look at theta decay also in a graphical way. I can come in here, and again, this is something that you don't see on other programs. This is something that's unique to OptionStrat. This is in the paid version, I should say, as well, that if you have the free version, you won't see these tools. So that's why I personally use the paid version. It certainly helps the situation. It helps me look at all of these things. So I can see the solid line here, again, is what I'll call that T0 line for theta specifically. And I can see that right now, as of today, I'm decaying at the rate of $5.79 a day. But as time ticks by, each day it's going to accelerate. Now I'm decaying at the rate of $7.93. And then I get all the way down here a day or two to expiration, and I'm decaying very, very rapidly at that point. So that's how we need to look at this. We need to understand that this particular position, a long call, again, we look at our theta, that long call has negative theta that is costing me money out of my pocket every day to hold this position. Now, you remember earlier I said that I am largely a theta trader, okay? I look for theta to develop income on trading. So how do I do that? How do I shift theta to positive? Well, here, again, I'm buying an option for $7.10. That option is going to, to decay out from under me. So if I wanted a position that was going to have positive theta, I could come in here and I could look at a bunch of different things, but basically I'm going to be selling something in most cases. And I can come over here, I can look at, for example, a uh, bull put spread. That is going to decay in my favor, depending on where I put that trade on. But I'm going to look at an iron condor or an iron butterfly. Okay, so here we are looking at the graph on the theta decay. And I can see, let me just change my, my range here a little bit. And I can see on this particular trade, this is a butterfly configuration trade. And I have, in this case, sold a 190 put spread. And I've sold a 190 call spread. So this was kind of an at-the-money sort of uh, butterfly, if you will. And if we look at this, we can see that now theta is positive. If the underlying does not change in price, theta is working in my favor on a daily basis. I am going to be essentially, based on options modeling, putting a little bit of money in my pocket each day as this thing decays. And again, we can march this forward and kind of see right here the profitability that comes in to that trade over time. And I can look specifically at theta as well. And if I take this back to zero here, I can see that initially theta is dripping in at a rate of $5.67 a day. As we get closer and closer to expiration, the amount of theta that comes in on a daily basis accelerates and increases on this trade. So that's what we're looking uh, for. That's what we want to understand is how that theta changes over time. So that's kind of a key factor in understanding what I'll call largely a delta neutral trade or a theta trade. Now this trade, this butterfly setup the way it is right now, it's not specifically a delta neutral trade. It's close but it's not exactly a delta neutral trade. But I could certainly turn it into one if I wanted. Now, coming back and looking at the P&L diagram, if I come and I look at my table here, 
I can see exactly what's happening here as well. Again, bring this back to theta, and I can see that I start off decaying at 567, and then it goes to 716, and then if the underlying does not move in price, the closer and closer I get to expiration, the faster that decay accelerates to where when you finally get down to the last day, if you are able to pin your underlying price, theta decay will happen very, very quickly at that point. Now there's another piece of this puzzle, which is going to be a future Greek that we're going to study, which is gamma. And one of the challenges you have is when you get to a point where theta is decaying very rapidly, gamma tends to be very high. And gamma, not, not to take too much from the next uh, episode, but gamma basically is an indication of how fast your delta is going to change. And we'll get into that in that episode, but just know that if your price moves much one direction or the other, your P&L is going to be impacted very, very rapidly in this trade. So that's kind of the whole thing here with theta. Do you want theta working in your favor, decaying in your favor, or do you want theta that's going to be working against you? Now, there's nothing wrong with having a negative theta position. I have often purchased long calls specifically on stocks that are skyrocket sort of stocks, and they have worked out very, very well. In fact, I did a video on one of these, but let me just look at my saved trades here. Let's look at this Avgo long call. So I bought this Avgo long call. It's a leap. I bought it over a year ago. I did spend about $9,000 for it when I bought it. So that was going to be theta decay. That was going to decay right out from under me if the underlying did not take off. In this case, the underlying did take off. And this position is up $73,000 at this point. So I spent $9,800 to get to that point. So that's my P&L on this is over 700% right now. So that's an example of yes. So back when I started this position, I needed to understand that that $9,800 that I paid for this option was all potentially going to decay out from under me if the underlying did not have a significant up move. But it was decaying at such a slow rate because again, I purchased this over a year ago. There's still 343 days left in this. So I purchased this over two years out. Going back to that diagram of theta decay where theta decays much slower early in the trade, I had some time. I could wait a couple months to see if this trade was in fact going to move in my direction. Ultimately, it started moving in my direction quite significantly. As a result of that, theta decay ended up not really being a factor in this trade. I did have to get above my break-even point. So when I bought this, I bought the 450 call. I had to get above 548 before this was going to be above break-even. But now that this underlying is trading all the way up here at 1270, you know, that's kind of a distant memory at this point and not really a factor. So bottom line to sharing this is that, yeah, I started this thing off with theta K, but I started it off with an option that was dated so far out in the future that the theta was decaying pretty slowly at the start. And then as it was slowly decaying at the start, it didn't really make a difference to me. I could wait a couple months. I could eat that theta decay to see if my thesis was right on this. As soon as it started taking off and I got above break even, I felt more comfortable holding on to this going out into the future. So that's a perfect example of how I'm okay with theta decay because now I'm controlling essentially 100 shares of Avgo that I would have had to have spent $45,000 for instead of the $9,800. And if I spent the $45,000, my return would be around 100% on this or a little under 100%, where in this particular scenario, I'm, you know, 700% return. So significantly, obviously, better return but I had to be okay with that theta decay at the start. So with that, we will wrap up this session on theta decay. There are two more yet to come, gamma 
which is going to be very important as you get closer to expiration. You'll need to understand how that moves and what that does and vega or volatility. So I'll see you in those sessions soon. Take care.